If you've been doing the dating thing for a while without finding the guy your heart craves and deserves, I'd be willing to bet you've started to fall for one of these six false beliefs about you and about love. And the problem when that happens is you start making the wrong decisions and start feeling disempowered and disappointed in ways that you shouldn't. So today, I'm going to debunk each one of them so you can stop wasting time and enter the relationship you want much faster. First thing I wanna say is I see you. If you are watching this video and you've been in the trenches attempting to find an amazing connection with a guy and it hasn't happened, the fact that you're showing up here the fact that you're still at it, the fact that you are not giving up and figuring out ways, in this case through a video, to figure out what am I missing that can help me get what I want without feeling so much pain, talks a lot about your character and talks a lot about the quality of courage that you have inside yourself. I wanna give you an analogy that's gonna help you understand how shift can happen. Imagine that you're shooting an arrow at a target and imagine that you make a two degree shift to the right of that target and you shoot the same arrow. At the beginning, if the target is close to you, the difference in the distance won't be much. Imagine that that arrow could extend itself through time and that arrow could continue traveling and instead of just a few seconds, it could continue traveling through one day, one week, one month, three months, six months. You would see that at the end of the, those six months, even though there's only a two degree to the right, the distance between the arrows that arrived to the different targets would be gigantic. That's what I'm talking about right now. You might be thinking that you have to make so many different shifts to create the relationship you want. And sometimes a two degree shift in mindset, in behavior, in expression to the right through time can get you exactly what you want. That's the mindset I'd like to adopt for this video. First myth or false belief you might be stepping into right now if you haven't gotten what you want is that the myth that there's something wrong with you. And uh, it's understandable. Listen, if you are connecting with men and they all end up being of a certain kind, if you feel like guys are betraying you or they're pushing their boundaries, you're unable to say no, or if you make the wrong decision again and again, different face, but same guy, then it's understandable that you think that there's something wrong with you. And I'm here to say that I need you to make a strong commitment today to make a big difference between you and your behavior. If you go from there's something broken in me to my behavior is not what I want, we can change behavior. We can change attitude. We can change energy. What's really hard to change is the core of who you are. So I'm here to tell you right now, in case there's any doubt in you, in case somebody has misled you, in case you've convinced yourself otherwise, there's nothing wrong with you. What we need to do right now is understand what are the behaviors that are driving this specific reality that you have right now. And we're gonna talk more about that in a second, but if you just adopt this one belief that it's not me, it's my behavior, and I can change my behavior, and changing my behavior changes my experience, then you're in the different order of magnitude of what you can experience in love. The second belief that you might be falling for, if you haven't gotten what you want, is the belief that he's just not out there, or if he is, he's already taken. That is a very destructive belief because there's 4.5 billion men on the planet. And my, my assumption is that there's not just one, the one. There's plenty of human beings who could fit the description of the one if you have the patience, if you have the strategy, if you have the, the know-how of how to engage, how to connect with them and how not to give up in the process. Instead of thinking that he's not out there, there might be a different energy that you're putting out there that can get you closer to the guy you want. There might be a different set of boundaries. There might be a different plan of action. If you're interested in the plan of action that I've used and customized for clients, share it in a comment and I'll share the link with you. There might be a new list of qualities that you're going for. I can't tell you how many times I've connected with clients who have a list and a hidden list. And the list that they share with me is uh, kind and they want uh, him to be connected and they want him to be a hardworking fellow. Qualities that seem reasonable. And then when I ask them about the hidden list, well, they have a hidden list in terms of height that's a minimum requirement or maybe some physical attributes that they, they really don't voice out but they have inside the back of their head. So it ends up being that the non-negotiable list is uh, on the ridiculous side. So my goal for you right now is not that you lower your standards, is that you raise them by knowing that there's things that are musts and there's things that are nice to have. And if you can manage a list that's a 2.0 version of the list you had where you're focused primarily on values, not saying connect with guys that you find repulsive, but I'm saying if you expect to connect with a guy who's physically your 
and energetically in that first second, that first date, your amazing match, or even on the picture you're seeing on the dating app, your match, and you don't find it, and you're basically saying no, and no, and no, again and again, you're leaving so much on the table because attraction can change through time. A chat, it doesn't, doesn't mean that it will, but it can. You can connect with someone that you find mildly attractive and feel him incredibly more attractive after vulnerably sharing, after conversing, after spending time with him. So just be aware that there's things you can do right now that can give you the feeling and the idea and the reality that the guy you want is out there, you just haven't met him yet. Or if you've met him, you, you didn't have the skills necessary to connect with him in a way that made it last. The third one is one of the strongest ones that really mess up men and women's chances to get love. And that's, uh, it should happen naturally or it should have happened naturally. And let me share with you right now that that's the most far-fetched idea that I've come across in recent times. And it doesn't seem far-fetched because we grow up with a sense of entitlement toward love. Love of the kind, devotional, movie-watching uh, kind where the happily ever after and they just met eyes and they crossed paths and that's what happened. We've never asked more of a love than at this point in human history. We want so much and we haven't developed the skills to match our desires. So if you want a guy who's your best friend, your physical partner, your sexual partner, he can change diapers with one hand and kill a lion with the other one. He has that sensitivity, but also toughness. I mean, if you're looking for something that is far more advanced at any point in human history, then it's important to understand that there's skills you can learn to be able to have a higher chance of creating it. So when you tell yourself this is something that should happen naturally, then a, you don't get the help you need to get there in terms of getting the skills, but B, you feel there's something wrong with you because if it should have happened naturally, Sally did and she didn't do anything. First of all, you don't even know what happens behind closed doors. Sally might share the Instagram version of her happiness and have a miserable ex experience, but what happens when you believe that this is something that is just uh, like a human right, you fail to see in that moment that there's a skill of attraction, there's a skill of connection, there's a skill of communication, there's a skill of repairing interactions. There's so many different skills we can learn. As we learn more skills, we are more able to experience what we want without having to face so much turmoil in the process. Now, talking about this, before I share my points three through six, if you're watching this right now, and part of the question you're asking right now is, why am I still single? I've developed a quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds that will share with you not the symptom, but the root cause of why this is happening. I've taken 12 years of experience helping women find love when they didn't think it was possible and put it together in a very simple sequence of questions you can answer. So all you have to do if you want the answer to your question, what's the number one reason I'm still single, is go to the first thing in the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have two things. The answer to the question why you're still single and a report that will show you based on your specific challenge and blind spot, what's the next step you can take to diminish the time it's gonna take for you to get what you want. Fourth one is, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not young enough, I'm not sexy enough. And, and you please, if you haven't listened to anything else I've said today, listen to me right now. There's no such thing as not beautiful enough or not sexy enough or, or too old for love. When you get intrinsically that the light that you have inside, that the radiance, that your expressiveness, that your passion, that your ability to express the core of who you are is going to be stronger for the right person than sexiness, than beauty, than any of these things that we might be looking at. Not saying that physical attraction is not important, is that physical attraction is severely impacted by the light you're able to harness and express. And if you're of the idea that you don't have the genes or that you're five pounds overweight or 10 pounds, whatever it is that you're saying to yourself of, as to why you can't get it, learn to harness the energy within by moving, by connecting to inspirational sources, by rituals that allow you to feel more and as a result of feeling more, expressing more. And you'll understand that the confidence level grows as your confidence grows and your expressiveness grows, your beauty also grows. Now, there's gonna be always the guy who's looking for a very specific 1950s version of what beauty is. Don't worry about him, but most men, are driven by what they feel. And they feel when you emote, when you express. And that has nothing to do with the DNA you were born with. So just understand that and own it. Next one is men only want sex. Uh, and, and you know what? The first thing I have to say, if you're one of those women who, who believe that, is my heart goes out to you and I get it and I understand why. 
So I'm not here to say you're crazy for thinking this way. I understand why. If you're going through the apps and you get dick pics every now and then, or guys share without you knowing them uh, disrespectfully that they want you to come over and, and then a list of things they want to do with you, I understand why you might feel like men only want sex. So I'm here to say two things. Number one, it's not true. There's many men who want something well beyond sex. If you haven't gotten a chance to know them, uh, you, you will if you date the way I'm sharing with you right now. But also when guys sometimes share things in a sexual way, it's not that they only want sex, is that that's the one language they've learned where they can be vulnerable, where they can be expressive, where they can shine out, where they can connect, where they can emote. Unfortunately, I'm not saying it's healthy, but I'm just calling it the way it is. You have been raised in different ways than most men have. So you have more avenues of communication, of expression that are healthy. And men sometimes have sports and sex to actually reveal the truth of who they are. It's changing over time, not fast enough. But whenever you see that a guy is only interested in sex, there's something beyond it he's not sharing. There's a, there's a fear, there's an insecurity, there's a passion, there's a love that he has only learned to express in one way. I'm not saying you have to stand there. I'm not saying you have to experience this respect. You can definitely move away from a situation like that. You can set a boundary in a way that allows him to step up or step down. But don't believe that what some men do where the loudest is what most men or all men want to do. If you understand that there's gonna be guys who just connect that way, but there's gonna be other guys who want to connect more respectfully, especially if you set the right boundaries and if you don't punch them for wanting to connect early with you, but you say, that's not what I do. Here's how I can do it. If you want to be exclusive with me one day, we may get there, but there's multiple steps along the way that you can, <laughs> you can write uh, to, to be able to get there. Then some guys who really want it will see the value in you and step up. And those who don't, they just, just move on and they'll have to miss out on connecting with you. The last one is that you have to get him to commit that you have to twist his arm, that uh, almost like a uh, joke between women, like g women want to commit and men don't. I understand that sometimes it feels that way. What I will say to you is that commitment from a man is not a one decision, it's multiple decisions. The way he connects with you, the way he dates you, the way he steps up to be exclusive, the way he waits for you to have sex with him instead of just rushing into things because you're asking him to wait, the way he helps you in times of need, uh, the way he shares his vision of life, the way you deepen the relationship. Every step of the way is a commitment. When every step of the way the commitment is taking place, the last commitment, the commitment to marry you, is easier to come by. You don't have to twist arms, you don't have to raise your voice, you don't have to necessarily put ultimatums. When you understand that the inspirational piece of commitment is the strongest force that will get him to commit, not the do this or else, then you can do things in a different way. Not every man wants to commit, but there's many men who want to commit, who haven't gone through the steps because the relationship hasn't taken place that way. And it's not your fault, it's not his fault, it's both of you, the way you're doing things. That's why I go back to love is a skill, not just a feeling. So hope this is helpful to you. If this is meaningful to you in any way, it would mean a lot to me if you like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to understand, how you can express the biggest part in you that might not be fully expressed right now, the thing in you that will get more guys to find you and only you incredibly attractive, then I invite you to watch this video right here.